Yeah, that's a really uh, interesting. I mean, it's hard to do that. Um, and I think about that all the time because when we have conflict and you cannot come, you cannot come to an agreement and you're butting heads all the time, sometimes you have to take a break and step back. Somebody has to give and everybody's got to give something. You cannot come to the table and expect to get everything you want, that the movement only goes for it. And I think for us as Native Hawaiians, we have had to deal with that time and time again. People keep coming and taking and taking and taking. They forget that they have to give back. And so when we uh, encounter some of those, like these laws that have been introduced, and we started watching what was going in, uh, what was being introduced at the Capitol. And, um, and for example, Mauna Kea is a big issue. It's our sacred mountain. It's, and for, um, it was group 70 that did the master plan. And I gathered all our kumuhula again. And they were doing, um, they were doing hearings on Hawaii Island only because they felt that nobody else had any responsibility for what was happening on Mauna Kea. So we all flew there because there were no meetings scheduled for Oahu, Maui, Kauai, any of the other islands. So we flew to Hawaii Island and we showed up and they said, oh, well, this is really a Hawaii Island issue. I said, let me remind you, Wakea, Mauna Awakea, Wakea is Sky Father. He and Papa Hanaumoku, his wife, gave birth to all the islands, not just Hawaii Island. Hawaii is the youngest one to have been born. But all those islands, Papa and Wakea gave birth to. That is still our sky father. Papa Hanaumoku is born on, on every island. That's our, our earth mother. So the fact that we're talking about his home on Hawaii Island doesn't mean it doesn't affect every native Hawaiian across the archipelago. So I said, obviously, you need to learn your history. Obviously. so. For years, they've been battling about building this new TMT. And I've been a strong, we started that, pro, um, I started Kahea, the Hawaiian Environmental Alliance, another nonprofit that would bridge the environmental community and the Native Hawaiian community that are moving in the same direction. And we took on Mauna Kea as an issue because of all of those and because they were not consulting with Native Hawaiians and because there are 21 observatories on top there. And they have two that are sitting up there that have been decommissioned, but are still sitting up there because they don't have the money to take it down because they can't pass the EIS. And so I said, you cannot build another observatory unless you take those two that are sitting that are dead up there out. I said, and what happens when you take it out? you're gonna affect the aquifer, the water table that sits under Mauna Kea. That mountain feeds all of Hawaii Island, all of Hawaii Island. So we talk about Red Hill and what happens, I live in Aiea. That, those tanks are not just military and affect the military housing. They will affect all of Aiea, Halava, Moana Lua, everybody. Is that going to be a disaster if we cannot, we don't have water? So all of those things, and I, I'm holding fast to the idea that you need to do an environmental impact statement. You need to tell me what's the impact of taking out that and all of the stuff that's in that land now on the mechanicals that are going to be polluting that will filter 25 years to filter the water down from, from the water, from the snow up there to filter down into our water. That's why our water is so clean because it gets purified by the lava. You know, you go buy those charcoal things to go, Brita, it's charcoal, I mean, it's, it's lava stuff, right? To filter your water. Well, we have our natural water, it's called lava. It takes 25 years from the mountain, the rain, trees gather it, get into the ground, filters down, 25 years, the water we drink today from our pipes are 25 years old, has had 25 years of filtering. 
So it's one of the cleanest waters. We need to keep it clean, and we need to protect our aina from pollution, and that means everything. So how do we we hold fast to some things? Do the EIS. You haven't done it, then I can't help you. Do you have a bond? Because those other two observatories don't have the money to come down. You can't build if you don't have the bond to take it down. In the meantime, give me the bond, earn the interest. If there's any mitigation, I got money to do that. So there are things that we can say, meet those requirements. We're just saying meet the minimum. You got to meet these things. These are required. And I'm holding the state responsible for that. So things like that, I cannot budge because I cannot make that decision for future generations. Educating the public is key. And that's what Kula for us is all about educating the public and sharing our culture in a way that you can appreciate. And so what I, I think for us is being better at educating the general public on the values and principles of Native Hawaiian culture so that you can understand why we're so adamant about you shouldn't be putting those things over there in Kaka'ako. It's a landfill. Used to be, uh, you know, and the landfill, then you're going to sink. So did you do your EIS before you went and asked them to give you permission to build like an eight-story building over here? It's a landfill. You got to go down in order to go up. Do you have the substrata to support it? What happens? All of those things have to be answered. Okay, so let's hold our state and people accountable and hold fast to those traditions and values of what's important for our aina for future generations. Well, so I was a judge at Mary Monarch this past year. And we've had a lot of that discussion among over the past few years. I've been a judge for many years at Mary Monarch. Um, and that's also, some of those things come up. Like, you know, somebody wanted to take an uli uli and a pu'ili and put them together and make them a handheld. And I was like, ah, uh, no. Because that, or, or can we use, and sometimes there are gimmicks that are being introduced. And so, and also introducing new material new styles or, or new influences from a way that comes into it. Like if you have a halal in New York or LA and they're not here, they do whatever they like over there because we're not, we're not seeing that happen. And then they come to Mary Monarch and they expect that they're going to get win because they're so dynamic and good. I was like, I uh, know. Hula Kahiko, there are steps that are, have been passed down styles that have been passed down, traditions that have been passed down. So ancient style hula, we try and keep that as, as pure as possible. In modern style hula, so hula, kahiko, ancient style. And I don't want to say it's, I say it's ancient style because it's not old. I can write a chant today and dance it in the ancient style, but it's not old. It's composed in 2023 but it's about something that's happening today, but I want it done in ancient style. I want it with drumming and chanting, and that's what I want. So a lot of songs have been composed for Mauna Kea, for things that are happening, and some of them have been contemporary. Um, how modern style with what um, we're gonna share in a minute, because I brought some dancers, and I was like, okay, you guys, Kaloku, my nephew's here, he's gonna sing. Oh, we should dance a hula, so we can have a hula. This is modern style, introduced probably after 1820, um, when we, we see that bridge between hula kahiko. So, kau kahali ahi kamana vehi amoi ko huala no oi o oi o halau lani o huakale mehe manue kanine te tua hivi te tua lo no ku umahalehua, all on one pitch almost. Ku umahalehua, very little change in the melodic pattern. After the missionaries come in 1820, they brought hymns and the Hawaiians were like, oh, look at that. They sing and they have verses like that was like one long chant that goes from line one all the way down to da da. You know, the Kumulipo is 2,000 lines long. 
no, rep no repeat, no paragraphs, but a lot of what we call different, different techniques of composing that are built in to help us memorize. Hawaiians didn't have a written language, we memorized everything. So 2,000 lines of chant, somebody mem memorized it. And then I was thinking like, who does that? Who can memorize? But I bet you have more than that, all of you, from your nursery rhymes, from Jack and Jill went up the hill, to Bruno Mars, to, you know, all those songs that you can sing, you know, for some of us, it's, you know, Michael Buble or Johnny Mathis, we, were the older people. we have all those songs in our, in our memory bank that we have memorized that we don't realize the capacity of us to memorize that material when you're passionate about it. And then there are some that just are up. I don't know how they do it. They're just like one time and they got it. And I was like, who are you and where did you come from? Get in the halal, right? <laughs> you need to be in this halal. Um, because they're so good at what they do. I teach them one dance and you, hello, get over there. Help me teach this song because I don't remember it, you do. I taught it, it's my choreography, but it was like, you know, I need to free up my, my, my brain so I can do something else. Um, so some of them are really, so that's Awana style. But in the 1820s, when the hymns came, Hawaiians started to write like that. So now you see verses, you see two-line couplets. And then those that are bridging that, we call hula kui, which means to string together like a lei. Flowers together, you, you string little things together. So we had ancient style drumming and chanting with melodic line now. Kala kaua he noa. Melodic line because, and then you repeat it the same thing. One more verse, two line verse. Oh, same melodic line. That was not there prior to 1820. 1820 was through compose, line one to line 2000. All in one line, a little bit margin. So that, then the, then the Mexicans bring the guitar. The Portuguese bring the braguinha. The braguinha becomes a ukulele. The guitar becomes a steel guitar, becomes a slacky guitar. And then we export it all to Nashville. Everybody in the world knows how to play a ukulele. They recognize it. Do they know it's a Portuguese instrument that was modified here? Then Kalakawa made his own, put his own stamp on it. He wasn't the one that did it, it was Manuel, a Portuguese guy that shaped it like an ipu, gave it that ipu kind of shape with the long neck, and then re-keyed it. And so those things then, it, and the, so then in Kalakaua brings in, and we have a Royal Hawaiian band that comes in to play music. Now we got band music and a Royal Hawaiian band, and, and then Kalakaua and Queen Lili Ukalani and Prince Lot. I mean, they all composed Western music played piano, prolific harmonies, choral, that influences Hawaiian music. Hula becomes changed now. We're doing modern style, not ancient style with drumming and chanting, but modern style with Western instruments and singing. So the difference between the two. But the feet patterns, the hand gestures have to interpret the text. There's no hula without any text. So you can't come out going like and having Mozart and doing hula to Mozart because you like the music. And I tend to not like, one of my Kumu hula friends did, the first time ever I saw your face as a hula. And I'm like, no, nails. <laughs> <laughs> so I have my own opinion. But they know that they cannot do that at Mary Monarch. And that at Mary Monarch, we try and keep things traditional because what we accept on that stage will be acceptable worldwide. And then people will take liberties with it and move. So I have long answers to little questions. <laughs> and she's going to come and say, I'm done. But we had one more question over here. Somebody else had their hand up. If not, we have a hula. Okay, yeah, Kaloku is going to come back, and the ladies are going to join me, and we'll do a song that takes you right here to Honolulu. 
Um, and this song tells us that we're going to go from Honolulu, written by Lot Kauwe, uh, probably in around the 18-somethings, 1850s around there. I don't really know. But we're going to take the ship out from Honolulu Harbor, whose name was Mamala Harbor, right over here where the boats are. We're going to go out. We're going to go passing, and we're going to take a trip to almost all of the islands and end up at Hawaii Island. Okay, all yours looks. No, come over here. Yeah, so I can hold it too. One more one, okay. <clears throat> Hello, Hano, oh, Hano, Lulu, I kawaku kalahale, Kanuku wa o mama la, Au wa ene mahope. Kamaya na mamua, kamalulu wa olele, kukui ya amau, pio ole ike kawa ula. Awaku ike kailoa, oni maya na upolu, hokomo ya mahukona, Kamakani ya pa a pa a, e wiki o e a pa nei, e a e o e kawai hai, ho o hai hai na ulu, kamakani ku e hu ale. Haalele ka mauna loa, o nga polu a o dia o kona, O komo ya ho o kena I ka pewa o ka manini Ha ina mai ka puana Ka heke o na kona No kona ke kai malino Ka ula na i ka lehu lehu Lava